Oh, I'm Paul from Elite Pilates Teacher Training. It's a YMCA Level 3 Diploma in my Pilates. This is an anatomy lesson of sorts and a positional lesson. The lesson is on the shoulder. The correct placement of the scapula, the shoulder blade on the ribcage. And about shoulder scapular dissociation. Or shoulder dissociation, actually. So, somebody taught many years ago the correct positioning of the scapula on the ribcage. One simple way of getting into it, keeping the spine upright. You don't want the spine to move. You want to allow the shoulder blades to roll forward. Obviously the arms will follow, they're attached. Lift them up, roll them back and set them down. And that, without undue physical effort, that's the correct positioning of the shoulder blades. Now I'll be honest, I learned a, a, a new way a few years ago. Because I can feel, if your body aware, I can feel a little bit of tension, undue tension really in the in the back, in the shoulders, keeping that there. It's not wrong with that, it's a very good one, I still use that a lot now. Just for people to get the correct positioning of the shoulder blades. It will feel, especially because people aren't used to that, they're used to that. So when you put them back there, it feels to them like they're really sticking the chest out. But to some extent, that's what it will feel like. Yeah, and it's quite natural for them to feel like that because they've never spent years like that. Another way is, set your shoulder blades down your back as if you're sliding your shoulder blades into your back pockets and then roll back. And it's actually a bit better one. It's just have years and years of force of having to do it in that one, quick and simple. Good one to do, and just around, wander around the shop shop and just check your posture every now and again, boom, put them down. Anyway, so that theoretically puts them, roll them forward, lift them up, roll them back, and then set them down in more of the correct position they should be. Some people say the shoulder blades should be two inches, three inches, different distances away, but everyone's body size and shape is different, so that's gonna be different anyway. Uh, but that's, that's two ways of getting the correct position on the shoulder blade. Let me just get a nice scapula a moment. So the barrel, the, the ribcage is shaped like a barrel. Now likewise, the scapula is shaped so they can freely, theoretically, freely move over this barrel-shaped ribcage. And that's what should happen. Quite a number of muscles are involved. A number of muscles attached directly to the scapula, to the shoulder blade. And a number of muscles attached indirectly very complex joint. There's a lot of mobility in this joint, but that comes at the expense of a little amount, a certain amount of instability, which is why some people have so many problems there. So that's roughly the position of the scapula on the rib cage. What about shoulder dissociation then? First of all, what basically is it? In an ideal world, you should be able to lift your arm up without your body contorting and twisting into all sorts of shapes. And the reason it does that is twofold, really, they're both linked. Faulty muscle recruitment. Usually faulty muscle recruitment because certain muscles are overly short or tight and over -dominion. They want to bully the body out of position. In relation to this area here, as a general rule, the number one culprit tends to be the upper fibres of the trapezius. Now this isn't an, isn't an anatomy lesson on the upper trapezius. Come and look at that video on back. Most people, I'll use drivers as an example, tend to be in this position. Their shoulders are up by the ears. In other words, the whole girdle lifts up, lifts up maybe in and around to the front. And we spend a lot of time, you think how many times, how, how long we spend driving or sat down even when we're in a forward position. These muscles are short and tight. Most people, when they get tension, it's going flat up here because they over dominate. They'll fire up dead easy. At the blink of an eye, they'll fire up which is what happens with faulty muscle recruit, they tend to be short and tight. That leads on to a few things. What's it lead on to? When they're really short and tight and dominated. Almost immediately you lift your arm, which should only be supraspinatus and the deltoid. You're lifting your arm, look at it logically. You don't need your upper traps for that. Unfortunately, what tends to happen, let's exaggerate it, you lift up for your can of beans out the cupboard, and bump, the shoulder goes up here. Faulty muscle recruitment. They want to bully and over dominate. Yeah. It's almost like your brain is saying, Do you know what, Paul wants to lift his arm up, it's easy just to lift the shoulder up. It's less effort. And to some extent, you could argue. But it's faulty muscle recruitment. We want these muscles, any muscle, to be strong but flexible. We want to switch off the dominance. As a general rule, switch off the dominance of the upper, fi upper fibers of the trapezius. Because again, what tends to happen is the shoulder lifts up and get faulty muscle recruitment. Dissociation in a nutshell is we should be able to raise the arm up to a certain amount 
without any other muscles getting involved on the act that shouldn't be involved in the act. We don't want the body, to, we don't want the spine to rotate. We want this to stay stable. We want these muscles that fix the shoulder blade into position to stay in position. There's going to be a minimal amount of movement forward, depending on how, how high and how far forward anterior you bring the arm. But as a general rule, you want to keep it relatively stable. That will drop down that way slightly, but only slightly. What we don't want, there's a big difference between the upper fibers of the trapeze just doing their job. Once you lift the elbows higher than the shoulder, the upper trapeze should that's not faulty muscle recruiters should kick in, but still it should kick in like that to lift that edge up there. To lift that upper traps here, lifting that up as the arm, as the elbow is higher than the shoulder, but only once the elbow is higher than the shoulder, upper traps should kick in. But even then, the movement should be there. What tends to happen? People go buff and shoot the shoulder up. So the association is we want as free a movement of that whole shoulder, but it's not just about the upper traps, but a whole host of other muscles as well, a hell of a lot, all the anterior ones as well. All of them, to be quite honest, there's quite a few of them. We're going to be able to move in extension without, as you move in extension, not rolling the other shoulder forward, keeping the spine stable, keeping the shoulder back. Any movement, we only want the muscles that should be moving to move. We don't want the other muscles getting involved in the act. And then in a nutshell, it's dissociation. Should be able to move that, it's more efficient. There should be movement to some degree, but it's the amount of movement and what movement is brought about. Usually the main culprit in a lot of movements is um, upper fibers of traps, amongst the liver and levator step as well, but mainly upper traps. Conversely, the lower trapezius tend to be weak. There's another reason why the shoulders are up. The lower trapezius is attached down here to help keep that down and keep it stable. Or more correctly, they move in conjunction with the uppers and the lowers. So, so if that shortens under tension, that should lengthen under tension and vice versa. Tends to be weak load traps. And that in a nutshell is correct position of the shoulder blades on the ribcage. So if that just really feels forced, then you possibly need to stretch off a certain amount of anterior muscles, maybe strengthen other muscles. What happens as they raise the arm? Does the shoulder raise up? If it does, you've got over dominance of certain muscles, usually upper traps. And you try and switch them off, simple arm raises. But it's a very complex joint. It's never just one muscle on its own. It's usually the interaction of a group of muscles. But in a nutshell, that is scapular positioning and shoulder dissociation. Free as much movement as we can without the rest of the body wanting to get in on the act. I'm Paul, Marie Plante's teacher trainer. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment on our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Ali Pilates Teacher Training and Ali Pilates Services. And once again, thanks for watching.